Hey guys, I saw Bear here, and today we'll be talking about the update 0.14 for the game Foxhole. I'm a little late for this one, so let's get right on into it. The new content for this update includes a new vehicle, the cargo ship. The cargo ship is a heavily armored vessel that can permanently deploy into a forward basis on beaches. Once deployed, construction vehicles can be built within its vicinity, and it will act as a forward operating base for incursions into new territory. The cargo ship costs 300 refined materials, has a crew of 1 and slots for 12 items. It has zero armaments and is meant to deploy on beaches, so that means it'll be extremely vulnerable during the opening phases of an amphibious invasion. The gunboat has seen a redesign. There's a new Warden variant of the gunboat, and the Colonial variant has also seen some readjustments. For all gunboats, the FMG turret is now located at the front of the boat, while the artillery turret is located at the rear. Additionally, both players manning either one of these turrets on the gunboat are now inside the vehicle and protected. So this should make gunboats a little more adept at fighting and less prone to getting caught in engagements they can't win. There's a new world structure in the game, forts. Forts are ancient towers that have been repurposed into remote operating bases. These are usually located at the fringes of the maps. These forts make great jumping off points for invasions into adjacent maps. Another new world structure is the observation tower. It is a tall lookout tower that provides map intelligence and coverage over a very large area. With all this talk of amphibious warfare being amped up, a new map has been introduced, Orbreaker's Isles. This conquest region is an archipelago of different islands and places heavy reliance on waterborne vehicles in order to conquer its territory. And two skirmish maps, the Reaching Trail expansion and the Great March expansion, have both received updates, so they now support 140 players. Some gameplay features and changes include Water mechanics have been changed. Players can now travel across borders on the water. The stamina drain your soldier experiences while swimming has been decreased by 45%. Your stamina will also no longer drain if your player character is not moving. That means if you're just at the end of your stamina before you're about to drown, you can sit and wait in the spot and hope someone picks you up on the way. Water vehicles can also now be entered while swimming. You do not have to be on solid land to enter them. That means if a ship goes down, you can actually be saved by passersby. Assuming they're not enemy passerbys, of course. Vehicles will also now drift. That is to say they will move slowly on the water surface even when they are out of fuel or disabled. In this sense, disabled or fuel empty vehicles in the water will now drift towards land so that they can be repurposed and won't just sit out in the open water for the rest of eternity. Skirmish right. mode has seen a couple of key changes. Oh, Skirmishes are now unique to the world. There are no longer any multiple instances of the same map running at once. That means there is one version of Reach and Trail, one version of the Great March, etc. that are on at once. The victory conditions are also now consistent with Conquest. That is to say, you need to claim all victory towns and build them up to tier 3 in order to win a skirmish match. Additionally, the 3 hour time limit for skirmish matches have been removed. The tech tree is now more comprehensive and has more branching choices to make for the players. And Orebreaker Isles, which I mentioned earlier, is now compatible with skirmish mode. Conquest has also seen some changes. A specific number of victory towns are now needed to win Conquest. Not every single town, just a specific number of towns. You still have to conquer most of the maps in the game, but you don't have to take every single last victory town. Conquest can now also be optionally extended to skirmish maps. That means Orbreaker's Isle, Reaching Trail, Great March, and so forth can now be added in as part of the World Conquest. New regions can also be opened up several days after the conquest starts, so if the player population is really high, the devs can open up new maps to allow for more action on more fronts. And lastly, conquest mode will now be exclusive when it is active. That means skirmishes will not be available if a conquest is running. That way all the players are centered in on the big fight happening rather than scattered throughout different modes. Some changes to the barges are as follows. The ramps for barges can now be lowered on any shore, not just docks and shipyards. To prevent some model abuses, barges can now only move when there are six or fewer players standing on it. 
The barge models have been redesigned to include a little bit of extra space for the driver to exit. APCs have seen some similar changes. They can only move when there are six or fewer players standing on it. And players can no longer stand on the cabin. Medical stations, which were previously only at port bases, are now included outside of port bases on certain maps, and they can be destroyed as well. Shipyards have been temporarily removed from Weathered Expanse, Endless Shore, and Umbral Wildwood. This is just for the Amphibious Assault update. This is meant to encourage players to do more amphibious landings on the eastern side of the map. Some game balances include. I mentioned earlier that the skirmish tech tree had been redesigned. It now includes landing APCs, field machine guns, cargo ships, gunboats, radio backpacks, garrison camps, half-tracks, and light utility vehicles to give players more options. The conquest check tree has also been changed a little bit to include the new vehicles, as well as rearrange some of the old assets. Some minor map changes have been made to Westgate, Faranac Coast, and Morin County. Some minor changes to production structure distribution in Westgate, Upper Heartlands, and Callahan's Passage have been made. Garrison supplies now increase the garrison size growth of an outpost by five times rather than three times. Some major changes have been made to tunnel networks. Tunnel networks will now no longer require tech unlock. They will be available by default at the start of any world conquest. However, their overall damage resistance against all weapon types has been decreased, so they are now more vulnerable. Additionally, they also now require a construction vehicle in order to build them. And the basic material cost has increased from 100 to 250 basic materials per tunnel network node. Mortars will now require blueprints in order to build them. The half-track cost has changed from 120 basic materials over to 120 refined materials. Barge costs has decreased from 170 to 150 basic materials. Barbed wire cost has increased from 15 to 20 basic materials. Barge item capacity has been increased from 12 to 15. Tech part drop rate has decreased by 15%. The sticky bomb throwing distance has been increased by 40%. And the gunboat light artillery turret damage radius has been increased, and its FMG turret can now aim further. And the supply drop item quantities have been doubled. Other changes include, border travel must now be manually triggered by pressing E. There's no more 10 second waiting period to travel between borders. You manually trigger it, which also means you can go right up to the map edges without having to risk being accidentally transported to a different map. The travel screen has seen some redesigns. It now includes more information, such as exact queue counts, contested areas, travel connections, and additional information. The world map screen has also seen similar design changes. There were a bunch of bug fixes for this update, but I'll leave that for the patch notes down below. Apologies for making this update a little late. If you've been following along with my channel for some time, you'll know that I was away on a job contract, and I just got back and just started recording today. So, you know, it's been busy. Stay tuned for more additional Foxhole content coming to the channel, and for some community events. I'll either post about these things here on the channel, or over on my Twitter feed. All right, let's push up a little to the road. If you like what you saw in this update, like and subscribe to stay up to date on oh, all the latest the Foxhole updates. And as always, good luck, keep your heads down, pull it, pull back, and stay back. Oh, in your Foxholes. Bear we just want to keep them scared. out. We don't need to necessarily take them out. Vehicle. You should just shoot him. I, I vote you just shoot him. Come on, do it. Ah, oh, hell.